Everyone knows about the iconic brick building system. You know. No. No. No! Where did all these come from? Mega Bloks, Lepin, Creo, Tycho, Bestlock? There are dozens upon dozens of brands out there, all fighting to piggyback off of Lego's success. Some of them are shameless enough to admit their inferiority on the box art, featuring slogans such as, compatible with leading brands. I personally am very purist when it comes to the LEGO system, so much that it bothers me when I notice a difference in the texture between the collectible minifigures plastic and standard ABS. Uh, I'll save that topic for another video. However, I am willing to give these brands a fair shake. There is a sliding scale of plagiarism when it comes to these various interlocking brick brands. The defining factor here is whether the product is aimed at augmenting the LEGO Play experience or substituting for it. This ranges from cool, if you're into that, to scum of the earth. You may be wondering what gives LEGO Monopoly on producing plastic bricks. The answer? Absolutely nothing. The LEGO Group wasn't the first to invent stackable bricks, but they did invent the brick and knob system. They took an existing idea and refined it, creating something brand new in the process. This is the essence of what LEGO is about, as said in their motto, only the best is good enough. Ever since the LEGO Group's patent on the brick and knob configuration expired in 1978, other toy companies have been eager to capitalize on the market. While LEGO has fought to have its patents extended, it has helped push them to continue to innovate and evolve their products to new dimensions, new themes, new parts, new gimmicks to keep things fresh. They have shifted to enhancing and preserving their brand image, and that image is quality. But don't get me wrong, LEGO itself isn't immune to trend chasing and bad ideas. The Ninjago Spinners of 2011 were clearly inspired by customizable Beyblades and similar products. LEGO did put a twist on it, adding figures and accessories to make the experience more unique, but ultimately this is an unimaginative gimmick which stood out from the rest of the line. Most notoriously unremarkable of all is the Snap, the perfect representation of the toy company's identity crisis at the time. Snap pretty nakedly lifted its name and gimmick from Kinex. I'd say this was plagiarism, but honestly that would be an insult to Kinex. Not a single ounce of originality was wasted on this line. Snap failed for many of the reasons LEGO's many competitors did, relying on over-specialized and over-complicated elements to create some very awkward-looking models. While there's some places for pin attachments which worked fine with Technic, Snap did not really fit into the rest of the LEGO system of play. But what about the other brands, and where do they fit on the sliding scale of plagiarism? Brick Arms, Brick Mania, Clone Army Customs, these are just some of the many complementary producers I'm familiar with, but I'm sure there are many more. These producers are meant to work alongside the existing LEGO system, producing high quality parts that LEGO either cannot or will not produce themselves. Many of them use the same ABS plastic LEGO uses in its molds, or use custom prints on official LEGO elements. I have to say, these are pretty cool if you're into that. But then there are these figures. No. While these are meant to work alongside the LEGO system, they don't exactly fit. The colors don't match the standard color palette, and the prints are generally underwhelming, and proportions look awkward and ugly compared to the simplicity of LEGO minifigures. These are meant to fill a void left by LEGO by creating figures in areas they have not licensed. As a result, they tend to be much cheaper, both in price and quality. This definitely fits into the desperation category, but it's not offensive so much as disappointing. The most iconic not-LEGO construction toy is Mattel's Mega Blocks, or as it is now known, Mega Constructs. All these years, and they still have those spelling errors. Mega Blocks has been known to scoop up licenses that LEGO hasn't purchased. They produce models that are generally more detailed and customized, but in lower quality compared to LEGO products. Because of the cheaper plastic and production process, we also see many more unique molds in Mega Block sets, and some sets consist almost entirely of unique elements. Designs range from freakishly ugly to remarkably authentic. It's very hit or miss. Honestly, some of the models and designs are pretty impressive and aesthetically pleasing, like this rendition of the NCC-1701 Enterprise, but it leaves me wondering how much better it would look if LEGO won the license instead. Remember how LEGO ripped off Kinex in the 90s? Well, it turns out the joke was on them, because in 2007 when Kinex had an identity crisis of their own, they returned the favor and created their own LEGO knockoffs. Most Kinex models have a simple but elegant wireframe aesthetic, which can look really empty but it gives the system a very distinct flair. 
So of course, Kinex immediately abandoned the simplicity in favor of these monstrosities. Sure, they changed up the design more than most knockoffs, rounding off the edges and adding attachment points to connect to standard Kinex elements, but this is an ugly, unhappy medium. These Nintendo licensed Kinex figures actually look pretty decent in terms of quality, but it's not something I'd like to see alongside a LEGO minifigure. All these brands fill niches in the market left open by LEGO. They do the legal leg work necessary to be distinct and nothing more. The price points on these models is quite good if you go by park count, some offering almost twice as much as LEGO would ask for the model of the same size. However, if you account for quality, all of these are varying degrees of inferior. This classification is reserved for those oriental knockoffs we all know and loathe. Intellectual property protection, to say nothing of human rights, has been out to lunch in China since forever, so it's no surprise that the greatest offenders are found there. These things can be pumped out for pennies on the dollar, making them popular items for seedy western resellers, especially the licensed figures. Many of these figures are only available in large LEGO sets, and are a huge incentive to buy the full set. Complain about exclusive figures and pricey sets all you want, but this is a poor substitute. Then there's the deceptive advertising. These brands try to mimic LEGO branding, with a square logo and box art that are almost identical from a glance. When Grandma goes to buy little Timmy a LEGO Star Wars figure, she may not notice that the seller on eBay is selling the pin Star Winners for a bargain price. Some of the designs are close enough to fool the casual collector. The proportions on these figures is pretty close to official LEGO, and the superficial details are right, but the color, texture, and quality are almost always wrong. Perhaps most egregious of all are the brands that not only exploit the LEGO company, but LEGO fans themselves, stealing fans' ideas for sets and selling them without notifying or reimbursing the creators. This is what happened to Gab Crema's The Dock, and the car wash by Paco Sanchez, creator of the Pirates of Barracuda Bay. These companies view popular LEGO ideas projects and skilled mock designers as fodders for quick money. Instead of hiring skilled builders and investing in their own original creations, they are forced to reverse engineer the success of others in order to make a living. Some of these clone brands produce original models, which on the surface I have no problem with. Even still, these original models rip off very recent and very unique LEGO elements. Again, LEGO spends countless hours designing and testing new elements before putting them out to market. And while some things slip through quality testing, this represents a significant time and fiscal investment on part of LEGO. To simply take a given mold and copy it to the letter is inexcusable. If you're thinking about buying one of these sets because it's a fraction of the price of the LEGO equivalent, don't! You're incentivizing theft not only from companies, but LEGO fans and designers. If you insist on buying a crap product, that's your own prerogative. But at the very least, make sure it is produced somewhat ethically. The reason LEGO fans are so devoted to the brand is not because they were the first to make the building block, but they do it the best and so consistently. No other toy brand commands such loyalty or inspires such a large and creative community, forming conventions and creating shared experience for millions of people each year. If, for some reason, LEGO abandons its principles of quality and starts consistently pumping out snap tier trash, LEGO will cease to exist and fans will jump ship. But so long as LEGO remains true to its motto that only the best is good enough, us LEGO fans will be there to support them. This kind of a video was a bit of a departure from what we usually do here at Club Rick, so if you like longer form content like this, be sure to let us know in the comments and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. We recently passed over a thousand subscribers and we hope to double that by the end of the summer. We're also looking to put out some bigger and better content over the next few months, so stay tuned and until next time, play well!